Consonant Shifts in Semitic Languages If any of you have ever encountered Hebrew, Aramaic, or Arabic, or just even two of these languages, you probably noticed the uncanny resemblance between these three closely related languages. In this video, I will explain a little bit about the history of consonant changes between these languages and try to solve some problems that this comparison poses. First of all, just to make sure, Consonants are generally the sounds made when we interfere with the airflow in our mouths. Sounds like p, s, d, and ch are consonants. I will not address vowel shifts in this video because they're just too damn complicated. Let's start with some simple examples. We'll start with the word for book. We'll go from right to left because these are Semitic languages and it just makes more sense, I guess. The word for book in Hebrew is sefer. The same word in Aramaic is sifra. You see that both of these languages have the same consonants in this word. In Arabic, this is actually an old word and quite obsolete today, it's sifra. If we look only on the first consonant in these words, it seems that a Hebrew S is compatible with an Aramaic S and with an Arabic S, right? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let's look at the word for tooth. In Hebrew and in Aramaic, it has a sh sound. But Arabic has the same sound as before, s. So actually, what we need to do here is to assume that Arabic s comes from two different origins. One that is equivalent to the Aramaic and Hebrew s, and another that is equivalent to the Aramaic and Hebrew sh. There are a whole lot of examples for this shift. If you want to look further, look for the words person, piece, and five in all three of these languages. So sound changes are simple, right? Let's complicate it just a little bit more with the word for eight. This time we'll start with Arabic, just because it's awesome. Now some of the vowels here are long, but we'll ignore that completely. This time in Arabic, th, like in the word thin, is equivalent to t in Aramaic and sh in Hebrew. So actually the picture is just a bit more complicated. Hebrew sh also came from two separate origins. The one that is reflected in Aramaic sh and in Arabic s and the one that is reflected in Aramaic t and in Arabic th. The real picture is much much more complicated than this. It includes around 29 different consonants but let's stick to just these three and see some problems. Now, you probably noticed I'm using a lot of numbers here. That's because numbers are a decent way of comparing languages. Most Semitic languages did not borrow words for numbers from other languages, but rather retained their own original words with their own original sound changes. So let's look at the word for the number six. If we look only in Hebrew and in Aramaic, it all makes sense. But why does Arabic have t where it's supposed to have th? Should we assume another consonant that just like the Arabic th is equivalent to the Hebrew sh in Aramaic t? Here we see the first problem. But luckily enough, we have data from other Semitic languages to help us understand the phonological process that happened here. Amharic would be a great example for this. And so would the dead languages Akkadian and Sabaic. I didn't find any normal fonts for Sabaic, so I actually had to draw it myself. Sorry for that. Now, you see that these languages had some pretty similar consonant shifts to the ones that we saw before, but I'm not going to talk about them now. This actually means that the Arabic sit comes from a historical sit. This makes a lot of sense because this would explain the doubling of the consonant in Arabic and in Aramaic. This doubling also happens in Hebrew, but only in the conjugation and is simplified in the end of the word. Sorry for that. This is a phonological process called coalescence. Coalescence is when two different sounds affect each other until they become something that is a little bit of both. Basically, T has three important features. It's a voiceless alveolar stop. Voiceless means we don't vibrate our vocal cords while pronouncing it. Alveolar means we pronounce it by touching our alveolar ridge behind our front teeth with the tip of our tongue. Stop means that the stream of air is completely blocked when we pronounce it. Sorry for all that linguistic mumbo-jumbo. What's important is that it got its voicelessness from the th, 
its stopness from the de, and its alveolarness from both. Coalescence is one of the things that can happen when a language can't handle two consecutive sounds for various reasons. Now that we've established the origin for the word six, we can see another thing that happens if we go back to Arabic. This time let's look at the word for sixth and add two other dead languages, Ugaritic and Egyptian, which is actually not Semitic, but it's somewhat related and can help me get this point through. I actually have never studied Egyptian, so I really have no idea what this S is taught me to in Semitic. Sorry. What happened in these words? We can see that in all of them, two different but somewhat similar consonants became the same one. This is called long distance assimilation. Long distance because these consonants are not actually together but have something that separates them. In this case, almost a whole word. These are just two examples for how we can solve problems that pop up when we compare cognates, which are etymologically equivalent words, from different languages. I'm sure it happens all over the world, but Semitic languages are obviously the best example because they are the coolest. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe for more linguistic videos. Till the next time, I'll share with you some secrets about how to compare cognates and solve problems. I won't give away any answers here, but here.